when you show this chart? What do you say to them? Well, when I see seminary students and from all of my experience in churches and in seeing what goes on in various uh, Christian organizations and seminaries, I observed this chart and it struck me like a lightning bolt. Now here is the top 10 professions for psychopathy. Now I'm not a professional psychiatrist or a psychologist, but this chart says something startling if people will notice it. While this is not in the diagnostic or statistic manual, they recognize this, Hare's list of psychopathy. Guess who is on the top 10 list? I'm sorry to say media and TV personalities. That's not making me feel real good. Nothing personal, but, it's, <laughs> but what broke my heart, honestly, as I look back, is that clergy are eighth on the list. You can't, Brandon, ask widows and orphans for their last nickel, like many of these places do, without being a psychopath. So what's a psychopath? That's someone that has no empathy for others. It's all about them. And there are levels of psychopathy. I don't think there are many pure psychopaths, but preachers are on eighth on the list. That has honestly discouraged me. Mm. And I show it every year in class, warning them, you focus on Jesus and him alone. And psychopathy, it's all about the person. So is narcissism. So are cults. And that's what I'm now teaching at my seminary. How did Jesus deal with people and to keep their role modeling strictly on Jesus? Your opening question, why does this happen? It's because quickly the, uh, the attention gets off of Jesus in ministry and onto whatever theology or whatever seminary or whatever church. Mm. And, and that's idolatry. And I don't want my men, I want my men to have a pastoral heart of loving people. And the best way they can do that is role model Jesus. Jesus said, I am the teacher. It is enough for the pupil to be like his teacher. So I'm teaching classes on how they must focus on glorifying Jesus, get the eyes off of them keep pointing to Jesus. Tell me, uh, Dr. Farnell, when you have- oh, Tell me, Dave, in order, to, in order to prevent that, I'm Dave. They do, all of our teachers at the seminary, we don't go by doctor, I, uh, we go by Dave, and that uh, the only one that has the title is Jesus. All That's right. It. And by the way, his, his seminary that he is launching in Arizona with a group of people is Redeemer, is that RSAZ.org, it stands for Redeemer Seminary, Arizona? Yes. Yes. Okay. Where in Arizona are you? We are in a uh, near, uh, an area southeast of Phoenix in a well, upgrowing, doing really well place uh, at a church called Redeemer Bible Church. And a lot of these guys that I have with me are guys that I knew over the years. And, you know, Brandon, they really got it here. They understood that Jesus has to be the focus and the attention. And so the passion, if I can say that, it is so true. Our passion is that Jesus would be the focus. You know what Paul well, said? Let me, let me ask you this. I don't want to interrupt, but I want to, I want to make sure our audience understands what, what I really want to hammer in on that night. When we see all of these pastors, so many of them, and I want to put quotes around pastors again, these hirelings, these these uh, psychopaths, narcissists, controllers, spiritual abusers, they, we see that they're some of them now almost on a weekly basis we read, and these are from what are supposed to be mainstream evangelical churches. They're caught up in, in, in sexual scandals. They're caught up in financial scandals. They're caught up in physical abuse of their spouse. They're caught up in covering for child molesters. Um, 
is why why do you believe we see this more now than say we did 30 40 years ago or is it more now than it was 34 years ago or is it just that we now have the ability through social media and the news to see these things which one do you think it is, is has it increased probably because of social media they're now being exposed more you you can see this in the social media and what is posted and in listening to what they say and it becomes quite shocking but you know what the lord reminded me of in philippians chapter 2 uh paul had the same problem brennan chapter 2 verses 20 through 21 for i have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare for they all seek their own interests not those of jesus christ there is narcissism right there uh and paul was struggling in his day that it was all about the person and not about jesus how, how have you seen in your personal years of teaching uh guys in seminaries maybe you, i'm sure you followed some of their careers as they've gone into the pastorate or you've you know seen it firsthand what have been some of the hallmarks or the signs you've seen of the narcissistic quote pastor in quote well the focus is on them uh Honestly, I see Jesus as being merely a vehicle they drive so that they can make themselves famous. And you have to watch for that. Uh, while they would say, oh, I preach Jesus, but when you look at what is produced, uh, the preacher is the focus of so much of the publications and so much of the things that they do that really Jesus is not glorified. You know, let me tell you this, Brandon. You know what Jesus said is a sign of the leading of the Holy Spirit in any ministry? Do you know what that is? What? He said, when the Spirit of truth in John 16, when he has come, he will glorify me. Now, let me give you a principle for any person that is listening to your programs. A mark of the Holy Spirit is Jesus exclusively being glorified and not the preacher. And if the preacher is glorified, let me shock you. It's not a work of the Holy Spirit. 